I actually think it's both a very good story and a very painful story. And what I mean by that is that I think overt sexual harassment on Wall Street is far less than most people would expect. I think the industry has really cleaned up, especially at the big firms. The lawsuit started there almost 30 years ago. And Wall Street, especially the big firms, they're now bureaucracies with HR processes and rules and regulations and diversity training. And so I think on the surface, things are much better. Yet if you look at the representation of women in finance, it's not improved much at all. And you look at the heads of the big firms, the upper ranks of the big firms, still most white male. And I think on Wall Street, sexual harassment and economic discrimination have always gone hand in hand. And so I think there's still a more insidious form of discrimination under the surface. But do we think that there is harassment that's going on that's somehow being covered up as a function of, you talk about arbitration in your article, you talk about just the, the, the vast amount of money that's available that's different than maybe other industries? I think there might be at lower levels. I'd be shocked if there were Harvey Weinstein of Wall Street. Really? Um, let me ask you about this because it and is. By that, you just mean like a, a CEO? I mean, I mean a figure with that much power in the industry who is engaged in acts that are that allegedly that egregious. Um, right. You do talk about your own personal story and a number of instances uh, where you felt that you were harassed, including one time where you say another married senior vice president tried to get into my hotel room and you called it a soul crushing moment. Right. What happened? Well, for, for me, it was. I always felt that I set myself up, right? So I think there's also a component of women, uh, especially of an earlier generation, who felt that whatever happened, we'd brought on ourselves by our own behavior, our own failure to protect ourselves. I was very young when I worked at Goldman. What I felt when that happened was that if I had been more protective, if I had known better how to defend myself, that situation would not have come about. Um, so that's, that's, there's, I think there's a strong component of uh, take care of yourself, especially if you've worked on Wall Street, and if you fail to take care of yourself, that you blame yourself. Bethany, I agree with that 100%, and not having worked on Wall Street, but having worked in any industry in a city, I, right. almost every one of my friends would say the same thing. If something happens, you think, why did I agree to go to drinks? How did I put myself in this situation? And yeah. if you do, you turn it right back on yourself. Yeah. And until, I would say until this fall, when, when this movement started, I would have just looked at my experience and said, 100% my fault. And it was interesting to see it through a different lens. I'm still not sure I can make that shift in perspective, um, but, but, it, but it's interesting to see it through a different perspective. What do you think the lesson is, um, maybe less for women, more for men out there, about the interaction and relationships? And one of the reasons I ask is, I've talked to other men who said, look, in this environment now, if I'm going to have a meeting uh, with a female executive or a colleague, I'm doing it with the door open. Um, if we were normally going to go out maybe in a group or even just together to grab a drink after a, after a meeting while we're on the road, I may not want to do that anymore. I don't know if you think that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's a very bad thing, and in some ways it's an understandable thing, and I write about that in the piece that people are, on Wall Street are very worried that Me Too will have a huge backlash for them, because Wall Street, like many industries, is a network-oriented industry. If you are excluded from that network, if you can't get the FaceTime with people, the closed-door conversations where the real conversations happen, you are locked out. And I think this movement could be used unconsciously by men as protecting women in a way that is going to further women's exclusion, and it could be used consciously by some men as a way to exclude women in a way that's not going to that's not going to be healthy. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.